Hey everybody, welcome back. So, what are we going to talk about in this lesson? Well, I said it in the previous one, slicing. Awesome. When talking about vector slicing, we learned that we can pass a vector in the square brackets that indexes the multiple elements that we want to extract. The same rule applies to matrices. Let's get right into it. I'm going to use the matrix we created the previous time. So, to select the first, third, and seventh rows of a matrix, all we need to do is type in this, passing in a vector of indexes where the rows element is, close the parentheses, comma, that's important, and close the square brackets. Don't forget to add the comma after the row elements. If you do not do that, R will only return the values for the indexes you've specified. Okay, so if you would take a single message from this and the previous lesson, it should be that when indexing a matrix row, you type the index for the row in square brackets and follow it with a comma. And if you're indexing a matrix column, you type in a comma and follow that with the index of the column. All right? All right. As you can see, this time R returned the data we asked for as a matrix because a single dimensional vector would no longer get the job done. Of course, if you want to save any of the extractions you make, just enter the name of the variable you want to create in the beginning of the line and rerun the command. Like this. Finally, we can subset matrices using the column names and row names too. To that end, let's give names to HP Matt first. Great! Now, if I wanted to extract all the information about the movie Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I would simply pass in the name of the row and leave the space for the columns blank. Again, do not forget the comma. It is crucial when dealing with two or more dimensional data structures. And there you go. I can also specify that I want the box office figures for the US only by passing in USA in quotation marks where the column index should be. Voila! Okay, now we know how to select items from vectors and from matrices. This is going to make it a whole lot easier to deal with data frames, as there are only a couple of differences between them and what we're learning here. But we'll get to that in a few lessons. For now, excellent job, troopers. I'll see you next time. For more videos like this one, please subscribe.